are one of three local boys on the Grizzlies roster, straight out of St. Louis. The Grizzlies debuted in 2001 when you were only two years old. What is your earliest memory of this team growing up? Uh, I remember one time with my summer baseball team, one of the uh, former managers of the team, Phil Warren, he invited a few of the players out. I think I was around maybe 13 or 14 around that time. So it's pretty cool coming out here. Like they told me it was, it was a professional baseball team. So I was sure this is what I'm working towards. So it was cool to be out there with them. And it was a very fond memory. I even tell my, told my father that he was like, hey, it'd be pretty cool to play here one day and like be a professional baseball player. Birds need to come around full circle how it did. And I'm playing on this field every day. So it's pretty awesome. Speaking of family, you're back in your childhood home. What are some pros and cons of being a professional athlete living at home again? Oh, uh, pros? Mom cooks all the time, so that's always great. Always wake up to a breakfast, lunch. Got food I can take to the field with me that's been made. Uh, of course, being with my family, seeing my mom every day, seeing my stepfather every day. and My dad lives three minutes down the road, so I get to see him all the time as well. So, cons, I, it's tough because like, I am a professional athlete and like I want to be on my own. I want to spread my wings and fly, so that's a little tough. So, I, I am moving out at some point this year to get my own house and stuff like that. So, it's probably the only kind is just being 24 still with my mom. Getting back to your playing career, you have a strong arm at the corner. How much of that do you attribute to your time as a pitcher in high school? Sure, a lot of it. I mean, even like when I was a pitcher, like growing up, like I pitched like probably twice a weekend, like tournaments when I was anywhere from like 10 all the way up to 17, 18. So it really contributed to giving me a stronger arm and also keep my arm fairly healthy throughout the years. I haven't had much of arm problems growing up or even now. Would you ever maybe consider getting back on the bump if Brooke ever gave you the opportunity? Hey, if St Steve, please. I just want to give me one inning at some point. I Because hitting gets frustrating at times. It's just like, man, I could like I was a really good pitcher in high school. Like I could have just went back and just been a pitcher and not have to deal with striking out or the frustrations of hitting the ball hard and it's still getting caught. And just being a pitcher where you're just always in control, got everything's working around you, go at your own pace. So I, I, would, I wouldn't mind giving it a try and see, see what goes along with it, but I also enjoy being an infielder as well, so. The Grizzlies introduced a new home run celebration tradition at home recently. You were the first to partake in it with your two run shot on June 8th against the Grays. Tell me what it is and what it's all about. Uh, it's basically just like a grizzly hat slash mask and someone just brought it to the field one day. It's like, hey, we should just a home run celebration. I was like, yes, yeah, most definitely. Like make it as fun as we possibly can. Like we're just out here trying to have fun with it. Like it's a job and it's grueling coming out here every single day doing the same thing over and over again. So whatever we can add to make things more fun and more enjoyable, we're gonna do that. And I didn't think I was gonna be the first one to wear it. Like that day I was like, I'm probably not hitting the home run today. Not, not really feeling it, but I was the first one to do it. And it got a little grizz bomb out there. So it's pretty cool to be the first one to do it. Got a pretty cool picture of myself doing it. So it is, it is awesome. And now from the baseball season to the holiday season, I understand Christmas time is special to you. From watching this Christmas while enjoying your mom's famous banana pudding to receiving a doll from your older cousin as a joke every year, what is your favorite memory of that time of year? What? Did I tell you about that? <laughs> You're DJ Stewart. We have to know. Uh, how, did, how did you hear about that? I don't remember telling you about that. Did I tell you about that? I might have. But yeah, like just growing up, my uh, oldest cousin every single year, like he would give me other presents, but he would always uh, give me a doll from just like some random place or just like a random Barbie doll and stuff like that. And, like at first I hated it, but over the years I just learned to enjoy it, just figure out it was a joke. But at first I was like, why are you giving me this? Like, cause he would act like he didn't give me anything else. And like, I was a kid, like oh, we didn't really understand the full gravity, like Christmas is about family and not about gifts. So it's always just, fun seeing that every single year like okay what doll did he give me this year but it's definitely very cool seeing that just a good tradition that we had along with just other family members being around eating good food and stuff like that especially that banana pudding love that banana pudding now despite devoting your life to baseball there is another sport that you're passionate about tell me about your love for soccer and where that came from it probably came from fifa i just played fifa with like fifa 12 or 13 or 14 and like i just fell in love with it from then on there i don't know if i Started, I started watching it probably two years after I started playing FIFA, and then that's like I really started to enjoy it. Like the World Cup was on, like the World Cup's the biggest event ever, and like the passion they play with is super similar to the World Baseball Classic that goes on. So like I just love seeing people play for their country, so that's what really got me involved in soccer. Yeah, and it's interesting that you mentioned FIFA, because your teammate Mark Vierling claims that he is better than you at FIFA. Yeah, he's not even close. I'm actually, believe it or not, I'm not lying when I tell you this. I was in the 0.1% of people that play FIFA, like competitively on the game. Like he, 
he can't handle me in FIFA. So I don't know why he keeps trying to bring it up like he can beat me. It would honestly be a waste of time for me to play him, but at some point I'll play him and show him what I got. You know, it's interesting that you say that because Veerling also said you'd get defensive if I ever said oh that. Oh my gosh, I'm not defensive. I'm just I'm just speaking facts to him and he knows this. He knows he couldn't handle what I would bring to him. So he, it's all right. We, I'll play him at some point, put it all to rest, and then he has nothing more to say. Speaking of Veerling, you've known him and his brother Matt for a while having worked out with them since high school. Then you and Matt were drafted to the Phillies organization. Now you're playing with Mark. Uh -huh. What has your relationship with the Veerlings meant to you in the years that you've known them? Oh, that's really cool. Like I, me and Mark played together in uh, prep baseball, like uh, some some type of tournament where like all the best guys from Missouri played together against other uh, states and things like that. Um, but I wasn't that close to them then. But then as time went along, I met Matt and we hit at the same place. and. Me and him got really close because we would hit four or five times a week. I see him all the time. So just over the years, we just kept getting closer and closer. And now I'm getting to play with Mark. And it's like, you're you're kind of like Matt, but also different. So it's just a different veerling type of experience. And it's just also being, being able to be around both of them. And I enjoy them both. It's just crazy how much of a small, tight circle the baseball world is. Because we all went to private schools uh, that all played against each other. So we've always been around and near each other. And now we're all pretty close. The feeling experience. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Continuing on that sentiment, you and Mark have spent a lot of time together mm -hmm. on the road as well this year as roommates. Mm -hmm. uh, I understand you two also went out and did something really cool recently on a road trip. Tell me about your VR experience. Man, that was so much fun. Cause like he was a little hesitant at first. I was like, dude, let's just do it. Like, why not? Like we have so much time to waste. Like, let's go out there and do it. He's like, I don't know. So we went into digs, went around, and we came back. I was like, no, nah, we're, we're gonna do this. Such a fun time, definitely experience. I, I hope everyone gets a chance to enjoy it because it was so much fun just shooting at zombies. He ran into me like three times. I was like, Mark, like you can see me standing here. Stop running into me, like you're distracting me. I think he died eight times and I died twice in total. And one of the times I died because of him. DJ Stewart, another day and Grizzly Stadium. Let's have another good one. You have a very positive, cheerful energy that you bring with you to the ballpark every day. Your enlightenment to this mentality came out of all places at a steak and shake. Yeah. Tell me that story. Yeah, it's just a couple of my boys. It's just a steak and shake of all places. Like we were just in a baseball tournament, it's a fall ball tournament. So it was like nothing seriously paying, playing for. We were just trying to just get back in shape and things like that. And like we were in, we were in steak and shake, just eating, vibing, having a good time. And I promise like everything just paused for a second. It was like, a gold light just like shined on us for some reason like it just paused like everyone was smiling at the exact same moment it was just like a like a picture perfect moment of my life and like from that point on I was like this is what life is really about like the relationships you make with people and those good moments where everything can just uh, stop in time and like you really appreciate what's going on there that was just a moment that always sticks in my head and even the last time I hung out with them someone else brought up man y'all remember that time we was in that steak and shake because it's just such a permanent memory in all our brains. It was just such a beautiful moment. Just I, every time I think about it, I just start cheesing because it's just such a such a great moment of my life that I'll never forget. I'll leave it with this: When Grizzlies fans head to the ballpark and see that number eight on the field, what should fans know and expect about that man? I'm just a person that loves to put smiles on people's faces. I'm of course I'm here to play baseball and do it all well, but there's a lot more important things to baseball. Like I'm a God fearing man and. I just love building relationships and making people smile. I feel like I'm on this earth to make people smile, play baseball, and just be with my family and things like that. So what you're gonna get at me, you're gonna get someone that plays hard, hustle all the time as much as I can, have competitive at bats, and just go out there and give them all. Just, I'm enjoying it. Hope you guys enjoy watching me play as well. So that's all. That's, that's DJ Story in a nutshell. Someone's just happy, smiling, wants to make other people smile, and just give his all in everything that he does.